Discord. <laughs> you get that right down there at our thing. All right, so Bill and Hillary Clinton are out grifting again, and uh, they're selling the they're selling tickets to hear them come talk. You think I'm kidding? This there it is. By the way, it said Scotia Bank Arena. <laughs> of course, they would play at a first place they would go to is named after a bank. Of course, <laughs> of course. An evening with the Clintons. Oh. I, b- I bet you Monica Lewinsky has a different interpretation of that. Anyway, <laughs> and evening, uh, and so does uh, Gaddafi. Anyway, so uh, Bill Clinton, <laughs> Hillary Rodham Clinton, and evening with the Clintons, uh, November, uh, uh, seats were available. Turns out a lot of seats were available. Turns out they were playing a place that uh, has almost 20,000 seats. They could barely sell three. They had to bring the curtain in. Here, I'll show you. This is from the Daily Mail. Uh, if you watch this video... So you see, do you not see the empty seats? It gets dark. That's because they cut the arena in half. They pulled a curtain. So that's a trick I learned in comedy clubs. So if you have a 400 seat comedy club and only 150 people show up, there's a curtain that cuts the room off in half. They just pulled this huge curtain. So now it looks like it's not so empty. And now it feels full. So they tried to do that again, but it's tough to curtain off uh, 16,000 seats. I'm sure at one point they were kind of looking at the refreshment bar going like, can we make a stage out of this? We might be able to. <laughs> I got an idea. Where are the folding chairs? So let's just uh, here. I'll just here. So if you see, there's the cam. So they're at all empty, all empty seats. Even when they c- closed it off, even when they cut the arena in whatever, a third do you see all the empty? Look at em, nothing but empty seats. There's some seats there. Well, where are there. the tickets starting oh. at? Like two hundred dollars or something like that. Too? Here's, a, here's another. Yeah, I, I, we're going to get to uh, this oh, one. Okay. Says this is an entire bank of seats that were empty through the whole show. And I don't know if you can see, but at the bottom it says uh, an entire bank of seats on the floor where tickets were going for one hundred and eleven dollars. On an official site, remained empty during the entire event. There's just one lonely guy. Sitting there. Yep. I mean, come on. You know when there are empty seats at a great concert, people fill them in. You know a meme that's waiting to happen? Just having that picture, and then there's that one guy sitting there by himself, and he has a thought bubble, yes. and it says, what happened? Ah. Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody make that. <laughs> so here is another picture, picture from the Daily Mail. Uh, it says, seats on the upper left can be seen empty just a few minutes before the former first couple took the stage. So you can see the... So here's the... You can see them how they brought... They tried to close off the arena. You can see it, right? So this stage should be way back because there's way more arena. Anyway, who cares? I do, actually. So uh, you see all the empty seats. It's hilarious. Here's uh, This is also from the Daily Message. They were below. Oh. <laughs> Look how much these tickets were going for. This is uh, There were below face value tickets on sale on StubHub hours before the event. 40 minutes before the event, they offered to pay you. (laughs) (laughs) Negative $20. The Bell and Hillary Show. Power couple kick off a 13-city paid speaking tour. Because they don't have enough money. (laughs) Because they don't have enough money, the Clintons. How many hundreds of millions of dollars do you need? Uh... And so here, Bill and Hillary Clinton launched their 13-city paid speaking tour in Canada in a hockey arena Tuesday evening where there were banks of empty seats and the power couple accused President Trump of joining a Saudi (laughs) cover-up. You notice he didn't say anything about an Israeli (laughs) cover-up. The cheapest ticket available on StubHub was going for $6.55 Canadian or less than $5. Your politicians aren't supposed to charge you to hear them speak. You're, that That's the right. Uh, although Ralph Nader did charge when he was running for president because that's how he would raise money because there was a media blackout and he didn't take corporate money. Mm-hmm. So that was a little different. So the way he raised money, that was before there was online. That was before social media. That was before all that stuff. So the way Ralph Nader raised money to run his campaign was you charged you five bucks to come hear him speak and he would fill stadiums. Uh, they're not filling stadiums. <laughs> you know, for five bucks, I would go and live stream it, though. I mean, that would, yeah. would kind of pay for itself. Yeah. Oh, well, just to see her coughing fits. <laughs> I, 
I had no idea that Canada wanted to see the Clinton so much. I, th- well, they didn't. Arena <laughs> sign. <laughs> Turns out they didn't. You were right. Canada's enthusiasm was quite overestimated. <laughs> on the official site, there were still seats up front on the floor available for $325, with other floor seats going for $83, plus a hefty service charge. In an unexpected twist, the Clintons, who suffered throughout 2016 for making millions on paid speeches, <laughs> were interviewed by Canadian polit- politician and diplomat Frank McKenna, the deputy chair of TD Bank Group. <laughs> Could the Clintons be bigger assholes? Could they fucking possibly be bigger asswipe holes? I don't know, Jimmy. Stay tuned. Because, we, you know, it's not 2020 yet. The first time they come out to do a, at a speaking event, they're charging hundreds of dollars to hear them talk. And they get a guy to interview him is the chairman of a of a freaking bank. You got uh, what? What the? Why don't you guys just tattoo the pictures of bankers cocks on your forehead? Just kind of drooping down into your mouth. Well, how much donor money does that come with? Well, we come. can talk. It comes. It comes. <laughs> Are you got to be kidding me. No, they're not. Of course not. Do you see how psychopathic these people are? How out of touch. They're, they're immune to normal shame. <laughs> it seems almost offensive to ask you, but uh, this is one of the questions that the bank guy asked him. It seems almost offensive to ask you, but why does Putin hate you so much? He asked the former first lady, you seem very ni- like a very nice person, he quipped. <laughs> <laughs> well, what an opener. That's okay. Ooh. I think he saw me as someone who had stood up to him and would stand up to him, Clinton responded. You mean stand up to him like when you took a half a million dollars and put it in Bill's pocket for a speech? That came directly from the Kremlin bank. You mean that kind of standing up? Or how about when you gave away our uranium production to Russia? You mean like that kind of stand up? And you did that for a hundred and forty two million dollar payment to the Clinton Foundation from Gustra. You're all so goddamn corrupt. You forget what your lies are. They forget what their lies are. Bill Clinton took a $500,000 cash payment in his pocket from a Kremlin bank for one speech. Hillary Clinton signed off on giving, what was it, 10%, 20% of our uranium production to Russia for a $142 million donation to their Clinton Foundation. It was a donation. Had nothing to do with anything. Yes, and there were no scandals about that. There were no headlines about that. There were no endless conversations on all the talking head shows about them taking that money. And the problem with uranium. Never. No, it was never. The only time they ever brought it up on a news show was to pretend that they were debunking it. And they weren't debunking it. Um, you stood up to you stood up to Putin. Really? Well, maybe that was the bank guy's follow-up question. Yeah. Maybe he was like, can I please have an example? We, we would have to buy tickets to find out. I guess you'd have to That's, buy 500000 We'll never know. Bill Clinton said that the United States had compromised its moral leadership. <laughs> We're currently bombing the entire world, almost. What moral leadership do we have? Are you... you get, again, this is all gaslighting bullshit. And no wonder people aren't going to pay for it. She couldn't fill a stadium for free when she was running for president. She couldn't fill a gymnasium. What makes you think she's going to be? Oh, because she had Bill with her. Oh, because Bill Clinton, the real celebrity, was there. Even no one wants to see him anymore. Serial sexual harasser. Yeah, I'm so glad he pointed out that we have no, our moral leadership is compromised. The guy who got a blowjob in the Oval Office. The guy who lied constantly. The guy who demonized black kids, called them super predators, exploded the prison population. Had his sister soldier moment. Remember that? What the sister soldier moment was for Bill Clinton? When he had to stand up and denigrate a black person to show to the right wing he was tough. And then he went on to gut welfare. But we've lost now we've lost our moral leadership. Why? No, because Trump doesn't play, doesn't kiss ass. 
He just does the horrible shit that they did too, but he doesn't apologize for it or pretend like he's not doing it like they do. And then he went on to defend NAFTA. 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 That's off the chart. But Rachel Maddow will lie to you and say he didn't pass NAFTA. What? Because Rachel Maddow also has no integrity when it comes to telling the truth about the Clintons. She'll lie to you. She lied to her own audience. She lied to everybody in the world and said Bill Clinton didn't sign NAFTA. That it was George Bush. But here, why would he be defending it if it wasn't his legacy? And you said this before, right, Jimmy, that uh, he was making a deal with Newt Gingrich. He made a deal with Newt Gingrich to privatize Social Security. Bill Clinton, after he deregulated Wall Street so it would crash within 10 years, ruining our economy, uh, also exploded the prison population, also gutted welfare, also passed NAFTA, which kneecapped unions forever. Uh, and he had a private deal with Newt Gingrich to privatize Social Security. It didn't work because the next day uh, the Monica Lewinsky scandal broke. And that took away his ability to uh, to privatize Social Security. That's your guy, Bill Clinton. But now we've lost our moral leadership. Why? Because the guy from outside the club. The guy that he golfs with. Well, that's right. Trump, right? Trump wasn't outside the club. Trump was in the club. He used to buy those guys, just like he said. They went to their wedding, Go used to golf together. Their daughters are best friends. Now they have to pretend they hate Trump. Now, and they're doing a good job of it. They're doing a good job pretending. They had no trouble with that that guy who they call a racist now. They don't have they didn't have any trouble with him before he wanted to run again, for president against Hillary. Before then, they were growl, oh, let's go, let's go to his wedding. Let's go golfing with him. Let's get on Jeffrey Epstein's plane with him. What makes this so troubling? This is the Clinton speaking about about uh, Trump's relationship with Saudi Arabia. Mm. What makes this so troubling is how much commercial interest both the president's family and business and his son-in-law's family and business have with the kingdom, with the kingdom, meaning Saudi Arabia. Clinton added, referencing Jared. C really? That's the problem? But the Clinton Foundation taking mil mil hundreds of millions of dollars from any all takers, all all governments, all shady organizations. That's okay. That's okay, right? The hundred and forty-two million dollars you got from Goistra over the Uranium One deal. That was okay. That no problem. What about all that money? So if you have business with somebody, it compromises you. That's what they're saying. That's what's really that. And I agree. So that's what they're saying, right? Well, the Clintons took $153 million in paid speeches since 2001. That money doesn't have an effect on them, though. So the, that, that corruption is coming from inside the country. Oh, no, that's also coming from Russia because a half a million of that dollar came from, right from Russia, didn't it? What the... F so the, and again, that's why they have a banker interview them instead of someone like me or an actual journalist who would mention this stuff to them. Oh, so so Trump's corrupt because he has business dealings with a foreign country. What about you taking hundreds of billions of dollars from foreign countries? What about you taking one hundred and fifty three million dollars in paid speeches from corporations? That didn't that didn't compromise you, though. So a totally different set of standards for you, right? You fucking sociopath. So totally different set of standards for them in an empty stadium, by the way. Well, I was going to say, hey, look on the bright side. At least we now know what we kind of already knew, but now we know for sure. Those speaking fees sure as hell didn't come from a door deal. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's nice to know that, that it was sold out. <laughs> People hungry for the truth. Going to see the Clintons. Talk about how somebody else is corrupt. Chardonnay Fuck. everywhere. Someone someone else is corrupt. That's like that's like Chris Christie pointing you out for bad eating habits. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that Jimmy Dore. He's uh, he spent a little too much time at the at the uh, smorgage board. There. <laughs> smorgage board. <laughs> I saw him at the buffet. That Jimmy Dore. It's a little time about who's telling who's this? Because Chris Christie. I'm reporting on people's bad eating habits. Hey, if the Clinton can bitch about someone else being corrupt. <laughs> okay, now you tell me 
she's not getting ready to run. I hope she's getting... Come on. I mean, this is ridiculous. She's doing these speaking tours. They're not selling out. It's so funny. It's so funny. I mean, I would... That's like my biggest anxiety. Will anybody show up? (laughs) And they have all of this money and all of this influence. And what do they take time to talk about? Donald Trump. They're not other more pressing issues to discuss. Climate change, the uh, disparity in the uh, wealth distribution, Steph, I'm the with crisis you. with Americans and health care. They don't want to talk about that. Uh, no, they want to talk about this. They want to talk about the president having business dealings in Saudi Arabia. And what that's known as is that's a conspiracy theory. But if you talk about their conspiracy, their their corruption, that then, but no one will ever call the Clintons a conspiracy theorist for pushing conspiracies. But if you if you bring this up and say it affects them, that that's when they'll call you a conspiracy theorist. If you mention that Bill Clinton took a half a million dollars cash in his pocket from a Kremlin bank for one speech, they'll go, "What are you a conspiracy?" If you if you mention that she signed off on the Uranium One deal, then one hundred forty two million dollars ended up with the Clinton Foundation. They will also call you a conspiracy theorist for that. But um, here they are being the most corrupted motherfuckers on the planet. And we all know it. If you read WikiLeaks, even her own campaign was screaming about her doing speeches for the banks. And when they knew she wanted to run for president, they're like, what the fuck is she doing? <laughs> this is how mental these people are. And the only people who buy this shit are the biggest sycophantic brain dead morons. And the, the, apparently there was only about 3,000 of them in Toronto. <laughs> Which is, that, that says a lot of good things, stuff about Toronto. They're not putting up with that shit. No, no you don't have Way us. to go, Toronto. And, and let's be totally fair here. There's a good chance that some of them were just Maple Leaf season ticket holders. They got confused. They got confused. <laughs> and what an unpleasant surprise yeah. that was. <laughs> Jeez. Could you imagine how boring that must be to sit there for that? That's brutal. That is brutal. Yeah. Yeah, that's brutal. I mean, you go to a show, you want a show. That's not a fucking show. And they're in a stadium. That's not a show. That's just people talking. That's amazing, right? Like when when I would do a live show, I construct it and I have jokes and I have peaks and valleys and momentum and a big closer. Things that big get people on their feet and people cheering and people laughing and people being entertained. This is just a couple of couple of sociopaths sitting around talking. That's not a show. That's a fucking podcast. At best. At best. I, I mean, that's being that's being unfair to podcasts. It's the shittiest podcast ever. Yeah. It is a shitty podcast. <laughs> Our next live Jimmy Dore show is February 1st in Burbank, California. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a list of all our live shows. And please become a premium member if you can. Become a patron. It's the way we support this show because they're coming at us. And we give you bonus. We give you hours of bonus material every week. Check it out. Become a patron. And if you can, make sure you're still subscribed. They unsubscribe people every day. I know it sounds crazy. It only takes a second. Please make sure and click that bell when you subscribe so they'll send you a notice.